Getting stuck in the mountains or the woods with an e-bike with no battery left is certainly not a very good look. So knowing your range, the amount you can travel on one charge is arguably, well, probably definitely one of the most important pieces of technical knowledge you can have for you and your e-bike. You could argue, I suppose, that you could do all that. You could find your range from an app sat in a cafe, but does that really give you the true picture? Now, some people would argue that an e-bike has a fuel gauge which tells you just how much juice you have left in the tank or an app or software which helps you predict whether you can get around a particular loop or not but having detailed knowledge about what you and your close partner are capable of is absolutely invaluable when it comes to riding an e-mountain bike now before we start i just want to point out that not all e-bike batteries are linear and that means that some discharge quicker when they get closer to empty status. No, the bottom line is actually only you know what you're capable of. And that's dependent on so many factors. So let's have a look at some of them. The first factor is battery capacity. Whether you're talking 400 watt hours, 500, 625 or 700 watt hours, the bigger the battery, the bigger the range. At the same time, the bigger the rider, the less range. Now, as an example of rider weight, a 50 kilo rider on a 700 watt hour battery might be able to climb 10,000 feet, whereas maybe a 90 kilo rider might only be able to do 5,000 feet on an equivalent battery. Yes, rider weight really is a big factor because a lighter rider will probably be able to ride in eco mode more during the day than a heavier rider who might be riding in trail mode but it's when you get to those punchy climbs, that lighter rider will be able to use turbo mode because they're simply gonna be taking less charge from the battery. So for the light rider, it's win, win, win. Now tire profile and compounds will have a big, big effect on battery range. For example, on a 20 minute technical climb, you could be looking at up to 20% difference between a soft compound tire and a hard compound tire in the amount that it takes from that battery. Well, that's a smooth surface, dude. Now, surfaces will have a big effect on range. I mean, just look at those geese behind me gliding along on that smooth water surface. Now, if that water surface was choppy, then those geese would definitely need a bit more bread. And it's not just the surface conditions, it's the track type and the ground conditions too. Whether it be mud, rock, root, or even obstacles such as this, they're all gonna have an influence on your battery range. So are there any quick answers to this whole range puzzle? Well, actually, yes, there is. Now, many brands have range finders on their websites on which you can actually calculate how much distance you and your bike can go, actually based on some of the variables we've already discussed in this video. Now, here then is a range finder on the specialized website. Now, my weight riding hilly terrain with infrequent stops, I have these numbers on a Levo. Now, that's with a 500 watt hour battery and riding in turbo mode. So, 23 miles and just over 2,000 foot of climbing. So that's pretty reasonable, but now change that to a 700 watt hour battery and it becomes a very different picture. More distance, more height, nearly 10 miles more and nearly 1,000 foot more altitude. And what about a 400 watt hour battery? Now here's a hardtail Levo in turbo mode and still not a bad day out. But now look at these two measurements based when you switch down in assistance to trail mode. Now note the difference though when you change from hills to mountains. You can either get more miles or more climbing. But what about the reality? Now I'm gonna talk you through two big rides which I've been on recently and I'll show you just how changing ground conditions will actually affect the battery range massively on an e-bike. Now our first example is of a ride that I did back in the summer, slightly wet conditions, I'm 70 kilos. I was riding a 700 watt hour battery, mostly in trail mode, with a little bit of eco. Uh, actually on these very trails here, a mix of fire climb, single track climb, and technical descents. Now, when you look at the numbers, they're actually pretty close. And 
I got 5,500 feet out of one 700 watt hour battery with actually quite soft tyres. And actually I got more mileage than that was actually predicted on the specialised uh, rangefinder tool. So when you take into account the, the different ground conditions all over the world, it really is incredibly accurate. However, as good as the basic rangefinders are, although they are becoming increasingly sophisticated, there is simply no way they can take into account the different tyre compounds, the different gradients that you find on a route, the different rider styles, and of course, a rider's use of the mode button. And what about the weather and the wind? Nice weather for, those are geese, not ducks. And then you head into the mud. Now, the tyres, tyres are gonna be sliding, the bike's gonna be putting on pounds per second, and the drag, what is that gonna do if not take massive amount from your battery range? Have a look then at the numbers of this particularly nasty ride which I did in the winter. As you can see, there's only 3,000 feet of climbing on one battery. That's 2,500 feet less than on the previous ride and 10 miles less in range as well. So what contributes to such a massive difference? Well, it's all the things I mentioned earlier, such as the added weight which is getting on your bike because the mud is piling on there. Plus, such things as the mud getting entangled up in the gearing and the derailleur, all contributing to more drag and drain on your battery. So, if it goes less range in one direction, imagine then if you went to a super dry country with low profile tyres, hard compound tyres, with loads of pressure, then the rangefinder actually might underestimate the ride. So you might be actually getting more out of the bike than less. So far we've looked at the specialised system, but what about comparisons of what we've done today with say a Bosch motor? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the surface conditions do have a huge impact. A 500 watt hour battery in hilly terrain, well, somewhere between 17 and 28 miles. And when you consider the specialised of 23 miles, it's pretty close. And what about Shimano? Well, the guys at Shimano reckon on about 50 kilometers in boost mode. My actual experience is about half that distance, but with about 450 meters more of climbing. So do rangefinders work? Well, out of the basic ones we've looked at today, yes, they do to a certain extent, but I'm sure you'll agree that the picture isn't that straightforward. And it really is important for you to know what you and your e-bike have got in the tank, so to speak. The reason I say that, I'm gonna give you an example of an event we went to last year. Day one featured 17,000 feet of climbing, and I knew that on three 700 watt hour batteries, I could only do 15,000 feet. But nevertheless, I knew what I was capable of and I actually knew what my colleague at 50 kilos was capable of because I knew he could do probably about 10,000 feet. So I know that he could actually take up the shortfall, which I had. The question is, do you know what range you've got from you and your e-bike? Because it really is important, especially if you're getting into dangerous mountainous terrain. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video and also don't forget to follow us on social media.